All right, we're going to take a look at lighting today. You can find the lighting up in this tab panel under Create, and down here just beside the cameras, you've got lighting. When you click on the lighting, they've got a drop down here, and the default is photometric. We're going to use standard. When you click on standard, there's eight options here target spot, free spot, target direct, free direct, omni skylight, MR area omni, and MR area spot. We're going to ignore these two until we get into a little bit more advanced 3D Max. Um, and we're going to start with the omni, and then we'll discuss the spot and the direct as well inside the omni light. In order to proceed, we're going to draw a plane which is our ground, and color it a darker color. And we'll draw a box down here so we can see it. And in our on our ground, we're going to actually draw a wall as well at the end of the scene. So we'll have some a solid surface to bounce light, light off of. All right. In order to put an Omni light in there, you just simply click, and it'll show up as a little diamond shape. As soon as we put that Omni light in the scene, the global settings, the global lighting settings of 3D Max, they turn off. So if we were to actually turn this light off, but leave it in the scene, the global lighting is no longer turned on in the scene, so the scene's going to go dark. And in order to see this, right down here under the first drop down, see this little checkbox called on. This is like a light switch, and you can turn lights on and off in your scene. So if you have multiple lights, you can turn one light on and keep two lights off, or vice versa. So for instance, we'll turn this off and everything goes black. That's because there's no more light in the scene. Again, global lighting is turned off. So we'll turn that back on, and we'll come back down here and look at shadows. Now, shadows is exactly what it sounds like. In order to see it, you turn it on, and we'll have to render it in order for it to actually show up. But you can see what's going on right here a little bit. So actually, we let's take away this extra light here. Get a little bit closer. There we go. And now you can see the shadow behind the box. Just next to shadow on, you see use global settings. Um, down here in this drop box, there's several different settings that you can set. If we have multiple lights in the room, each light that has use global settings checked will be changed if you change one light. So for instance, if we have one, two, we have four total lights in the scene. On these lights, if I turn Use Global Settings on, this one, this one, and this one, when I change something in here, these three will change together. This one will not change because Use Global Settings is not turned on. So it allows us to set up lights that are similar to each other, make one change here, and all of the lights will change. So for the meantime, we're going to get rid of these extra lights. Just focus on this light. All right, with the Omni light, we'll expand this intensity color. And what this does is this sets the multiplier for the light. So right now, by default, it's set as 1. As we increase this, this is going to increase the lumens of the light. 
So for instance, if we jump that up to 2, you see how bright the scene got. Now in order to, for us to see this a little bit better, we're going to open up the RAM player. Now the RAM player is going to allow us to see two renderings side by side and uh, see the impact of the lighting on the rendering. So on the RAM player we have channel A and channel B, so that's going to be our first rendering and our second rendering. We're going to drop this back down to one, just so we don't get confused at which one's which. I'm going to rotate this around so we can see the block about halfway through our screen. And I'm going to render this. Alright, on channel A, we're going to open last rendering image in channel A. Click OK. We're going to change this to 2, set that, render that, we're going to set that to channel B, so open last rendering image in channel B. Now what you see here is you see a split screen. This right here is the multiplier of 1. This is the multiplier of 2, and it's split down the middle showing you the differences. You can see the differences in color and differences in um, the lighting itself. So right here you can see your wall that was a light green. With more light it turned white so we lost that color. Here our box was pink. It's still pink but it's a lighter pink. And our ground is a lighter gray here. So the importance of this we can actually see, let's go up to five and we have almost a complete washout of color with the exception of this box here. We'll replace this, we have to render it, and then we'll replace channel B with that rendering, and you can see how much color you've lost. Right, let's drop this back down to one. And we're going to look at the color that by default the light is white. Now the problem with this is that if this was an outside scene, sunlight's not exactly white. This would be more like a fluorescent light or something like that. So if we want it to look more realistic, we might add a little bit of yellow to the color. And you can see the difference here. This is what it was. This is what it's going to be and our lighting has changed. Now let's look at that again. We're going to go something more drastic here. Let's go to like a blue. Get a full saturation. And you can see how it's changed our scene. Right. Move back to a little yellowish color. Alright, now we're going to talk about decay. Now by default, the decay type is none. When we click on this drop down box, we have three options. We have none, we have inverse, and we have inverse square. In order to understand how this works, we're going to have to look at a little of the math behind the lighting and behind the decay to understand it. The first thing we need to understand is this Omni light is putting out light from all directions. So if this Omni light were like a light bulb and this light bulb was turned on, you would get light coming from almost all of the directions. When that light shines down, so it goes at a 90 degree angle straight down, this area here is going to be brighter than the area, say, at a 45 degree angle from that light over here. Your distance is longer from here to here, because that's the hypotenuse of the right angle. So this is going to be a little bit dimmer than this. If you raise this light up, so if the light 
goes from a source of being here to a source of being here, your distance here has increased, and so has your distance at your 45. Now, when we set this decay as none, 3D Max doesn't recognize this 90 degree up and down until you get out of the area of light. So it recognizes a ball of light around this light and when you get out of that this will become dark again but while it's inside that range this will remain the same illumination. It appears to get brighter because all this around here is getting darker but if you'll see when we put it down here it's still the same amount of brightness from here to here. Now when we turn the K on we're going to go to the inverse and notice everything got darker and now you've got this ball around the light. This ball represents where the light starts from so we can change that and look at that in just a little while but let's just assume that this is our bulb for right now and as our bulb gets further away it's going to get dimmer and dimmer until to the point we don't have any illumination at all the way this works is if our light bulbs here and our object that we're illuminating is here so that's our box and then we have a distance from here to here if we set this light with a multiplier of let's say 4 and we have a distance of just to keep things simple, let's say 2. <clears throat> the inverse means that we go from multiplier of 2, our, or excuse me, multiplier of 4, our distance is 2, so the illumination at the box itself is going to equal 2. The way we got that was we went 4 minus 2 is 2. And this is going to be the indirect, or excuse me, the inverse. When we get to the inverse squared, the way this works is we square this distance. So 2 squared would equal 4. So now we go 4 minus 4, and this changes to 0. If we look at that on a graph, it's going to look like this. We have our distance, and our distance increases this way. We have our illumination. It increases this way. So when we start here, our inverse, just the straight inverse, is going to be a linear line straight down. So as the distance increases, the illumination decreases. If we take our box, this is the straight inverse, if we take our box and we move it towards the light, it's going to progressively at a constant rate get brighter and brighter as it gets towards the light. With the inverse squared, the curve is going to look more like this, which means that if we take the box and start here, as we move it, it's going to start initially getting a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter, and then as it gets up here, it's going to start getting really bright. And it's going to get really bright really fast right in here. So that's the difference between inverse and inverse squared. So when we clicked on that, you saw that things got bright, uh, things got darker as we increase it's getting brighter and brighter really fast. And if we go back to inverse you can see all this other stuff is lighting up better. 
Now one other thing we need to look at right here is the start panel. As we decrease that, notice that little globe around the light is getting smaller. That's changing where the light starts. So now the light starts here rather than way down here when our, when our sphere was bigger. So we have to remember that our light starts here when we when we use this inverse function, our light starts at the edge of this globe and then goes from there down to the object.